Hello. All right. Today, I'm looking at the Mission Gold Pure Pigment Set. And this is going to be the first time that I've used a watercolor paint that has honey in it. I wanted to say a honey-based paint, but it's not really honey-based. Um, honey is used as a uh, humectant, and it draws moisture into the paint. And it's also like a natural preservative. So there are a few brands that use honey. Um, of course, Mission Gold. Sennelier uses honey. M. Graham uses honey. And I have one Sennelier and three M. Graham on this palette. I've had those four tubes of paint for <clears throat> a long time and decided that um, I think I will just kind of place them in this palette so that I can use them. And then my all my paints that have honey in them are in the same palette together. I'm going to talk about the palette that I'm using. Uh, and I'm going to be using the Meaden 100% cotton paper. Hi, Erica. Hi, George. Hi, James. Everybody's starting to come on in. Hi, Christine. And um, so I'm using the Meaden paper. And I am using my new Princeton Velvet Touch brush. This brush. Wait till I show you guys this brush. Hi, W.A. Castle. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm really excited about that. I can't wait to paint, really paint with it because uh, I did a little bit with it, um, but I really want to paint some more and get a feel for these brushes because uh, I just ordered a couple more. So, so far I'm liking it. Um, however, today, hi, Teresa. So today uh, I'm going to share with you the palette that I chose. There are a few versions of this palette I have everything linked in the description below. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and move towards the desk. There we go. And um, the meat and watercolor, my meat and watercolor paper, which I've been using, you guys have seen this. And there is a link in the description. This one is brand new. I finally finished the last one I was working on, but I didn't open it ahead of time because I wanted to show you guys this because I've had a few people um, that when they get it, they comment about something. And so I, I want to share, um, but let's just take a quick look. The Mission Gold Pure Pigment Set. That's the one that I am using today. That's most of the paints on the palette. And I'm not going to be swatching these today. I've already swatched them. In fact, I did that earlier. But if you're interested in seeing them swatched, I'm going to try to have that. I did record it. So I'm going to try to have that edited and put out for you guys on Saturday. So yeah, there are 48 pure pigments from Mission Gold. And um, I went ahead and marked on this chart the ones that are in the 24 plus 2 set. The plus 2 being the Chinese white and ivory black. And there's that. Um, yeah, I just put a plus sign. So anywhere there's a plus sign, those are ones that are in this set because they didn't distinguish it. So anyways, um, this is the Mission Gold Pure Pigment Set. I had just a little bit of, of separation um, in a couple of the paints when I put them in the palette. And I just put them in and then took like my plastic little tool that I have here and I just mixed them up and it was fine. I can't exactly say that about one of the Mgram paints, but we'll discuss when we get there. All right. So moving those aside, I'm going to take the plastic off of this paper so it doesn't glare with the lights on you. Okay. I started, I started to open it and I said, I was going to take it off and then to run and grab something, which is so usual. And they came back and I forgot. So there we go. All right. <clears throat> this meat in paper. Now, I have little tools like this that I've gotten with blocks. I use those to take um, my paper off the block. But if you don't have one of these, and where did I put it? Uh-huh. 
because we're live, it's run away. Hi, George Pencil Art and Rob. Hi, Joseph. Um, yeah, where did it go? I have one here. I just use a palette knife. There it is. Palette knife. It does the same job. So you have a palette knife. You know, don't worry if you don't have one of these tools. Let's talk about this paper. When you first get a block of the Meaden uh, paper in, whether it be cold press, hot press, or rough, you're going to notice when you open it that your paper looks a little weird. And the sheet's green. On the different... Um, on the different blocks, it's different colors. Like, I think the rough is like a, an orange color. I think the, no, I think the rough is like a pink color and the hot press is like an orangish, like a salmon type color. I could have those reversed, but regardless. There's a colored piece of paper on here. And if you notice, the rest of the paper is white. So you just have to come in here. If I can get that to separate, there we go and you take that piece off. Okay, just take that piece off your block. And use it for a scrap piece of paper. That'll get used. I will put it aside. And then your first sheet is right there. So what that does is it just protects your first sheet. Should that plastic wrap that I took off somehow walk away from your block of paper in shipping or in handling and shipping, um, it still protects the first page of your block, which I appreciate so much because I have gotten more than one pad of paper where the first sheet has something on it. And then it's like paint doesn't want to stick in certain spots and it just acts weird. And you know, it's because people have touched it or whatever. I like having that protector to protect my first sheet of paper, but I have had a couple people that have actually messaged me and said, whoa, wait a minute, my paper is in a weird color. And so you got to take that first page off. So yes, there's that. And today I'm going to talk about, or we're going to see the process I go through when I can't figure out what the heck I want to paint. Because it has been a mentally draining couple of days. I think that's why if you are, if you are a, um, channel member or patron, I have been on the discord. If you're a channel member or a patron, you want to be on discord because I definitely share the most over there. Um, I give you guys behind the scenes. I am always posting things. <coughs> I woke up this morning and shared pictures of, uh, the, about 10, 10 to 12 inches of snow we just got last night and all the birds that were like hanging out on the deck and at the feeders. And uh, anyways, I also shared my uh, spontaneous checkout at Blick today and things that I got. And uh, yeah, it just hasn't been a good mental headspace the last couple days. And I think that's why I was like, I'm doing it. I'm hitting it now. You know, I have, you know, do you guys do that? You like store things in your cart that you are, you're eyeing. And then, um, yeah, all of a sudden I'll just be like, I need, I need the dopamine hit. Right. And boom, check out now. So anyways, I did, I have some more, I have some more stuff coming. Uh, again, if you're, if you're there, you know, James says, yeah, great picks. James is over there and, uh, glad you like them. So yeah, um, I definitely encourage you if, if you are a channel member and, um, or patron get over on discord because we have a lot of fun, but for two days, I've been trying to figure out what do I want to paint? I knew I wanted to use these paints. They've been sitting here for some time, just staring at me. So I do have one Sennelier. This is Kaput Mortem that's in this palette. I have the Cobalt Violet. I shared my whole drama with Cobalt Violet with uh, everybody over there on Discord too. And then I have Mineral Violet and Ultramarine Blue. Now, Mineral Violet, these are M-Gram. Mineral Violet was interesting because when I ordered this, I ordered this from Blick. And I went back to double check. On Blick, 
it says that mineral violet is PV16. I, I almost needed my glasses. I'm like, where are my glasses? I'm like, oh, they're on my head. Um, but it's PV16. <clears throat> I ordered it. But then when it came in, I looked at the tube and the tube says PV16, PV15. And I was like, well, that's not a single pigment paint. And then I went to M. Graham's website and I checked their um, chart. Fell in love with a whole bunch of new colors there. That was dangerous to do. And um, yes, in fact, on their website, they also list it as PV16 and PV15. So this is a multi-pigment color. It's the only one in the palette. And like I said, it was because it was listed as a single when I ordered it and um, it's not. But when you see the color, it's all right. I don't mind, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, let's take a look at this palette. This is the Meaden 33 Well Plastic Palette. Again, I have this linked below. And if you get it from Meaden, uh, I do have my code Clark10, capital C-L-A-R-K, one zero. And that'll get you a discount if you order directly from them. Now, this is the 33 Well Palette. And you see, I have filled it with my paints. Um, there are some empty spots, <laughs> not for long. And it has a large mixing area. This is big. In fact, let me hold that up for you guys. It's big. You can, not only is it that big, but you could, I don't know where I just put that other palette knife. This, this one still has paint on it from the other day. But this tray with our colors can actually lift out. You have all this mixing space. Now this is a plastic palette, okay? But you have all that mixing space. I'm gonna leave these in here. And, hi Shauna. Caution Artist at Play is here. And you can take this out and then you also have all this mixing space, right? Or put it on either side. There's plenty of mixing space in this palette. You're not gonna want, for, even if you mix wild and like I do, <laughs> take up the palette, um, you're gonna have plenty of space with this. <coughs> so let's see if I can squeeze this in here so you will be able to see it. Well, you're gonna be able to see some of it. Um, I have, of course, my meat-in uh, brush wash here the bowl the dual bowl i i love it. and my paint pucks my paint pucks are in it. if you guys see i got a bigger paint puck for the right side i love this thing that is all i use now <clears throat> huge thank you to meaden <coughs> for sending that along let me slide this up now you can see the whole palette we're gonna try that see how that works okay kind of puts my kind of like get my chair like hop my chair over a little bit and um all right now you can't really see all my paper though can you let me see if i can fix that there we go whoa Okay, that's about as good as I am going to get. Of course, I have my sponge in case I need it to wipe off or, you know, get water out of my brush. And I have two Princeton Velvet Touch brushes. Uh, number four, round, if I need any detail work. And a number 14, long round. It is long. And you know this is not brand new. I just, this is... You see, I just, it, it's still a little damp because I used it. So anyways, this is a long, it is it's definitely a long round. Um, those long bristles really hold, that is an inch and a half from where the ferrule ends 
to the tip of those bristles. Yeah, that is an inch and a half long. It is long. Uh, oh my gosh, you're gonna get that stuck in my head, Joseph. That's rotten. Um, so I saved this, which, you know, comes on your brush. Now with mine, I received it like this. I was like, no, no, I was so afraid. I shared this with everybody on Discord and I was so afraid it was going to like my, the tip was slightly tipped, uh, ticked and I thought it was going to be um, ruined. Because clearly somebody who has no idea about brushes probably picked it up. This probably fell off and they were like, oh, wait a minute. I, I don't know where that goes because clearly it didn't slide down to here. It can't fit over this part. Um, but when I go to set it uh, after I'm done using it, I will just protect that point because it is very long and it is a very sharp point and I'll just kind of put it on top and what I like is is it's triangular so my brush I just said my I was going to say my brush doesn't roll as it rolls away but when I when I said it yeah I got that stuck in my head too Shana. oh but when I um set it on my desk when I'm done it doesn't roll away the end is open it can still dry out it's not going to cause any problems and um, so anyways, I'm going to do some painting with this long round 14 and continue trying to fess out how I do. I like it. I don't like it. I do like it so far. I'm liking it. And the point is like amazing. The amount of water and pigment this thing can hold is amazing and if you look I've only stained it like I've only stained it up to here so I'm doing a good job with this extra long bristles of like not getting too much paint up into my brush um so anyways I am I am appreciating it so far so there's that that's what I'm using I do have them linked below and the other thing that I like is in the Princeton line of brushes um the velvet touch so it's you're you're definitely a step up <clears throat> you're definitely a step up from say Princeton heritage. Um, but it's not a huge difference in price. And I'm actually waiting. Princeton is sending me a replacement for this brush because my crimp somehow, um, this one got crimped way back to the end of the ferrule. And unlike any of my other Princeton brushes, you see like normally there's like more space here after the crimp. Well, there wasn't on this one and it caused the ferrule to like flare out at the end. And there's actually a space it, it pulls away from, you can kind of see it right there. It pulls away from the handle and that's actually a little sharp and it's not exactly comfortable. So I've got to be careful like where I hold it. Like I don't want to hold it here because it, the other day I was painting, I like choked up on my brush. Like I was, I didn't even realize like I was way down here, like for the, my normal distance, like from the paper or from the tip of my brush. And I was like, whoa, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> you have to hold it back way further. I was way too close on it, but anyhow, I'm still liking it so far, but yeah, they didn't email me. I got the email this morning that they have a new brush on its way to me. So I'm going to give this palette and I poured these paints yesterday and I can say that the Chinese white, and you'll see, I just put a dab of Chinese white here. That was really for the purpose of me being able to swatch them for you. <coughs> um, <clears throat> I don't use white usually when I work with watercolors. Um, I'm not a purist by any means because I will use black. Um, you know, some were like never white or black in watercolor. Yeah, no, if you enjoy it, use it. It's fine. But I don't care to use white. I rarely use it. Sometimes I will mix it in and I can say that this Chinese white, I'll show you guys what these colors look like. Again, I will have the actual swatching for you Saturday if you enjoy to see the colors going down and look at them and maybe discover new colors that you will love, which is how I came across the Sennelier Caput Mortem because I saw it swatched and it was gorgeous. And so I had to have it. Um, I like painting landscape, so I like a lot of earthy um, muted tones. Oh, my hands are shaky today. And there we go. But those are the colors. How beautiful is this palette? Um, you'll notice that I have some G's on mine. Um, they don't say if they're granulating on the actual tubes. 
I just, you know, trusted my eyes. <laughs> I went with what my eyes saw. And I added G's to the colors that I knew definitely uh, I could count on them to granulate in the future. So those are the colors. And then these three M gram colors, this has started me down a rabbit hole with M gram. And I am actually now in contact with um, someone from M gram because I had a lot of problems with this cobalt violet. There was a lot of separation. I mean, this entire pan filled with like the clear liquid that had separated from my pigment in the tube. That was an adventure. I literally had to take a brand new pipette. Luckily I have thousands. <laughs> and if you guys have been around long enough, you know those, the pipette story, but um, always read the fine print when you order people. Um, anyways, I, uh, I grabbed a brand new pipette and I had to draw all of that back up and I took it and like forced the pipette into the tube of watercolor paint, like as far as it could go to kind of try to seal it as well. And when I did that, I just slowly kept putting that back in the tube because I knew I'm going to need that. Um, it's there for a reason. Uh, and then I took a, um, a long skewer like this. And as much as I could in that tiny opening of a watercolor tube, I put that in there and I literally like just, I just kept trying to mix it up as best I could and re-poured it in this pan. I have reached, I reached out to M. Graham. Um, I had some issues at first and not because of anything, um, not because they weren't getting back to me or interested in getting back to me. It just happened to be a perfect storm. This happened. There was a problem with their website. So when you con did the contact us form, it wasn't going. So it just kept saying error. Um, I tried to like contact them over Instagram and like my message just disappeared. I was like, what is going on? The universe is like, not today. So anyhow, they did. Um, I contacted, re tried to reach out one more time and I got a message back first thing this morning and this was like at the end of the day yesterday. So I got a message back first thing this morning, um, from Judy over at, um, M Graham. Hi, hi Judy. Thank you so much for your help. <laughs> um, so she is actually sending me, asked me to pick another color and they're going to send me a color of my choice. So I'll share that with you when it comes. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil ahead of time, but that can happen apparently with this particular color. It's just something with the pigment and it likes to separate itself. And so anyhow, and I have to say, I'm pretty sure that cobalt violet, I have to check my, my core. That's not the one. There was another one I'm from core and I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, I think it was this exact same pigment PV 14. And, um, yeah, I, I, I'd have to check. I'm not a hundred percent, but any, anyhow, so there was that one. And then I had the mineral violet, which I told you and it ends up, it's not a single pigment. It's two, um, which no big deal. Look at that color. Amazing. Um, and then I had the ultramarine and this is ultramarine here from the mission goal and the ultramarine from M Graham. And so you can kind of see the comparison there, both PV29. And um, I just thought that these, being the only other paints I, I had, I told you I hit checkout. <laughs> they were the only other honey base paints or paints with honey in them, not honey base, but paints with honey in them um, that I had. So I was like, Oh, I still have extra spaces. So they'll fit, go perfect. And I thought that they kind of accentuated this palette perfectly too. They were also different pigments from ones that were in the palette. And, uh, yeah, but again, I'll tell you all about the pigments and all of that stuff on Saturday. Um, I just have to edit that video. So I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to have that out for you guys Saturday. Um, but yeah, I am loving this palette swatching the paints was a little interesting. Now, like I said, 
it's my first time with honey based paint and I need to catch up with the chat because I saw that the chat just went crazy because Rob did a thing again. And um, so I want to make sure that I acknowledge everybody and thank Rob. So we will be there just a moment. But these three spaces will not be vacant for long. Um, I think I made a decision with what I want to add from Mission Gold. I wasn't quite sure, but I've made, I've, I think I have made up my mind on that. And they have a um, Cobalt Black. It's PBK 27, if I am not mistaken. And I know I've been talking with Shauna and she has these paints too. And um, so if you follow her channel, highly recommend. I think you're going to be seeing her talk about these before too long. Um, and I'm not sure which set she has. I think it's the same set that I have here. The, um, <clears throat> the 24 plus two. But Cobalt Black, which is PBK 27. Now, my favorite granulating black to this point has been PBK 11, which is Mars Black, or if you're a Daniel Smith fan, it's called Lunar Black. And this Cobalt Black, I am looking really, I am, I'm really interested in that. So it's in the cart, and I know that I will probably be hitting checkout right after the stream. <laughs> so yeah, that one is definitely, that's what I'm adding. I was back and forth like, do I want a paint spray or do I want this or do I want that? And, you know, I'm kind of liking the whole single pigment thing here. And I want to kind of keep it that way. Again, with the one exception, but I digress. So, yeah, Shauna says <coughs> she thinks that's the same set, <coughs> excuse me, that she has. Now, let me take a moment, <coughs> just check in with the chat, and then I'm going to show you what I do when I am stuck. And inspiration has not been coming. So we have here a big thank you to Rob Younce, who has gifted 10 Clark Fine Art memberships. Now, let me just say that if you are not sure how you can make sure how you can make sure that you are eligible for a gifted membership in the future, if you go into the video description. And if Joseph is out there, he might be able to check the description and pop it into chat. But I have it linked down there um, that you can follow that link and it will actually take you right to how you can accept gifted memberships on this channel. So if that is something you want to make sure that you can be eligible for in the future, then I encourage you to check that out. But welcome Caution Artists at Play, uh, Sydney H., Cookie Schultz, love it. Gail Robbins, um, Donna, is it Lethals? I should just say you guys' first names because I'm going to butcher your names. My apologies, Donna, if I'm not saying it correctly. So Donna, uh, Jack Pumpkinhead, great name. Tara and Rebecca Hesser and Joshua, it's uh, Weiss Mantle, Auntie Travels, sorry, my nose is itching. Um, there we go. I see those were all gifted memberships. And so if you have been gifted a membership, you are now a super fan. And if you use discord or want to get on our discord, all you have to do is discord is an app and it's where we kind of chat and hang out. And sometimes I'll just go live randomly over in Discord and you can pop in and say hi and I'm just doing things in the studio. It's kind of like when I zoom it, only it's just random and everybody can join. I have it open for everyone from super fans up. Um, so it, like I said, that doesn't happen often, but I do do that. And it also gives you a bunch of perks. I do a lot of behind the scenes. Um, I share reference photos. Um, we have live chats. So certain tiers have live chats on Friday. We will be doing that tomorrow morning. Um, there are a lot of um, benefits and you can check out uh, all of the perks and benefits uh, under the membership tab or over on Patreon. 
they are the same, whether it's YouTube or Patreon, with the exception of super fans, because you can only be a super fan here on YouTube. So welcome to everybody. Uh, if you do download the Discord app, you create your account on Discord, and then you're going to go into your settings and you have to do connections and you just connect Discord to your YouTube account. And then YouTube will know any any channel that you are a member of that has Discord as a perk and it'll automatically put you onto the correct servers or give you access. So I have a community post about it if that was like a whole lot of information. <laughs> so you just go to my community tab and you will you can very easily find that um, post. And I'll share it again here soon because um, there have been some posts since that has happened. So welcome to all of the new members. I am very glad that you're here and thank you, Rob. I definitely appreciate um, you sharing that gift with us. Okay, so when you're just sitting there going, what am I gonna paint? This has happened to me for the last two days. I've been thinking, what am I going to paint on Thursday? What am I, gonna, I knew what I wanted to paint with. I knew I wanted to try these paints out and just nothing. Like I said, mentally it has been a taxing couple of days and I have not been, I've been wanting to create, but I haven't really been in that creative focus where I'm like, I want to paint this. And Sometimes that can lead to just like sitting and staring into space or endless scrolling on like Unsplash or Pixabay looking for reference photos. Um, if you are a channel member or a patron over on Discord in the reference photo channel, <clears throat> I recently shared um, on Unsplash, I curate my my photos if there's a photo that i see that catches my eye that i'm like oh i might want to paint that in the future i curate those into collections i have a dozen collections right now <clears throat> they cover topics from waterfalls landscapes um oceanscapes sunrise sunset uh, i have aquatic animals uh land animals birds and butterflies flowers lighthouses um, trees, seasonal, I think still life, there's only a couple in there because I don't really do still life. But all that said, I shared the link to all of my collections with um, patrons and members over there so that you would be able to see a bunch of inspiration and just with whatever, whatever mood strikes, like they are or very well organized. So I did share that over there. Now, I've spent the last two days just kind of looking at some photos and it's like nothing seems to be inspiring. That can be frustrating. Um, you feel like you have like this block. This is what I do when that happens. I like to sit down and just do some intuitive painting. And if you've never tried um, intuitive painting, I encourage you to do so. Let's see. Intuitive painting is, we just start by putting some paint on our paper and letting that paint start to speak to us and kind of following its direction. It might not turn out, that's okay because in the process of it not turning out, you may then be inspired to create something else. And that's really the ultimate goal here. At least it is for me. So that's what I'm doing today. We're doing some intuitive painting. It's also gonna let me see how these colors react in those wet and wet washes that I love to do and um, kind of see what happens. So I am just going to take a hockey brush. This is a Creative Mark hockey brush and I'm using it only because it was already sitting here it's a big brush and it's going to really wet this paper quickly. I don't have it linked below, but you can find them, I'm sure, on Amazon. And Creative Mark is a um, Jerry's brand, but they sell it on Amazon. So I'm going to just wet this paper. And again, we're using our meat and paper today. And 
And sometimes these will turn out and they will be like some of your favorite pieces. Anybody that is watching or even those of you watching on the replay, drop me a comment. Have you done intuitive painting? Do you enjoy it? And if you haven't, does this sound like something you are going to give a try? We have done a little, kind of done a little bit of this. I mean, it was guided because I did a painting. Um, right now I have a series. You can actually see a couple of them. I started a series with patrons you see here where we are actually sprinkling in we are sprinkling in some watercolor lessons, like some techniques and things like that, into these little paintings. We're doing a hundred. It's going to be a hundred landscapes. So I'm going to have a hundred lessons uh, coming to patron, Patreon and channel memberships. Uh, some of them are already starting to come through and you can, uh, it won't show you, it won't show you the video. I think on I think on YouTube it actually shows you like the thumbnail, but it tells you it's a member video. Um, but anyways, all of the creator members and above have access and we are on a journey of a hundred landscapes. Uh, we, it's one that I'm calling adventures in watercolor land. And, uh, we are down the rabbit hole for sure, but so far having so much fun. Oh, See, excellent. Um, so Shauna says, I have done intuitive paintings for all the same reasons you have listed, Angela. It's, uh, it has so many benefits. Yeah, uh, I love it. I I love it just because when I'm stuck. All right, so we're going to see how this medium palette. Let's let's mix some paint. Let's mix some paint and see where is my, I need my, my swatch sheet here. I'm going to kind of stand that up. Yeah, just like that. I'm going to stand that up in front of me so I can see, helps me look up real quick, see the color I want, and then be able to pick it from my palette because, you know, my palette's brand new. I just painted that. Now I do have my uh, little, I've shared these with my, when we've been doing those Patreon videos, these were corners that came in shipping packages. They're really hard. And I saved them because I was like, these are perfect. This one I cut so that I could fold it. So I scored part of that and then folded it under because then that will lift my block about a half an inch. And then this one will lift my block up, you know, just over an inch. So of course not Tara here. We talk a lot in the beginning, don't we? <laughs> um, you just missed about the paints and such, but no, you haven't missed. I'm going to pop the little one right underneath my block just so that gravity can help me out. And this paper is super thirsty and I've been talking. So we're going to just give it one more quick coating. And I'm going to tell you this paper, you will see a little bit of buckling, but with the amount of water that I toss at my paper, you see how there's a little bit. As long as I leave this on here, it is going to dry and it dries flat. Um, it pulls down nice and tight and I don't have any issues. All right. I'm going to take some, there is no Payne's gray. All right. I'm seeing the first time I tested this palette, when I shared this palette in my Christmas haul, um, I put some paint on it and it did not bead in the spot I put it on. I'm seeing a little bit of beading here. But not too, it's not too awful bad. So this is Burnt Sienna. And the Burnt Sienna is a PR 108. So a little different pigment there for the Mission Gold. And again, uh, if you tune in on Saturday, I am not only going to swatch these colors for you, um, and I'm going with Ultramarine because I'm going to make my gray, right? My paint's gray mixture. And, um, so anyhow, I'm going to swatch these colors for you and here we go. Perfect. 
um, and tell you all about the pigments because there's some interesting stuff here. You can see some of that ultramarine blue come through. And I don't know why I needed a gray sky. Maybe because we just got 10 inches of snow and uh, my my aid device over here in the studio says uh, at four o'clock it could start snowing again. So I guess I'm just feeling, I'm just feeling the snow. And with intuitive painting, we just start grabbing our colors and uh, putting some stuff in. I'm just looking, this PBR 25, so PBR 25 is a beautiful color. However, however, it's partially staining. And if you use it too much in its mass tone, it can actually get glossy. So it is something to be aware of. Anytime I have um, a PBR 25 from any brand, one of the first things I do is swatch it and really make sure that I get that mass tone going so that I can see <clears throat> when it dries, <clears throat> how is it going to be? This is the cobalt green deep. I don't know why I I'm, I'm mixed, mixed those so close. Look at that. I have no idea where we're going with this. This is why it's intuitive. I'm always painting water and I'm just like feeling water, but I don't know. Cobalt blue number two. I also want to try to work in a few, a few different colors here. So you see how that skipped? There's a, like a dip right there in this paper. Okay, apparently guys, we're getting water. At least in part of this painting. Hi, NJ. And I'm looking up at my monitor, I'm going, Ha, huh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm feeling some of these colors here. Um, let's mix up some bamboo green. And my palette's just like a mess. I'm like, I'm not, there's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just like, here's a clean spot. Let's mix something up. And these are still so sticky, which I had, I had some concerns that it might be hard to um get that it's beating it wasn't beat the first time i laid down color maybe it was just because i had a lot of color on my brush that day it didn't bead and i was excited um but here's this plastic palette uh that is doing some beading which i am not appreciating um because i like ceramics so much I'm going to grab just a little bit of this autumn orange, maybe a touch of the permanent red deep. I don't know what that's going to do to my green. There's a bright, that's like a bright springy green. That's for sure. A little more red into that. Their Viridian, which I digress, is not Viridian. Just remember, um, paint manufacturers can name their paints whatever they want.
<laughs> yeah, and Jay said the Lowe's painting with Snellia, but they stay sticky. I have a feeling these are going to stay sticky too. And the Snellia could put mortem. Oh my goodness. This, this is like very wet and sticky right now. And I usually paint from dried pans. I prefer it. Um, if I get two paint, first thing I do is put them into pans and dry them down and try to be patient and wait to paint with them. Um, let's just throw some Kaput Mortem in here. That is some serious green right there. And like I said, when you're doing these um, intuitive type paintings, you might not like what you do. It's just a piece of paper and you can absolutely just paint it again. I'm just dropping some ultramarine because but this is water. And here's where this, the point of this brush, it, it is so pointy. Yeah, that would have, that's gonna have to be a lot drier to, um, able to put any marks that are not going to just quickly buzz out on me. Yeah, I definitely feel like there's more control um, when that paint is, once it's dried down. So I really wasn't sure if I was going to like paints that are made with honey because are they not going to dry down? I mean, we all know that my studio will suck some moisture out of things. But the whole point of paints that contain honey is that they draw moisture out of the air to keep them wet. That's what the honey does. It's a humectant. And like I need something else in my studio sucking the moisture out of it. But the... um. I'm actually kind of liking some of that right there. Anyhow, I'm trying to leave some of this white so that it'll be like, you know, waves crashing. Um, hi, Shia. <clears throat> the, um, where was I going with that? So they don't, if they don't dry all the way, you know, I really wasn't sure. Am I going to like painting with these? I don't know. And uh, spoiler alert, I have more coming um, M Graham. Well, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't gone there yet on the, um, on the Sennelier. I just have the one. Um, what's on the Van Dyke Brown? Let's get some more brown in here. I did. There is another brand. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to spoil everything. There's another brand that I'm looking at. That I'm, I'm not just looking at them. I've ordered and I have some on the way. Um, yeah, I'm definitely thinking we're looking like over the dunes towards the ocean. That's just, I guess that's where my, my mind wants to be today. <clears throat> Instead, it's looking outside and a foot of white snow. It's like so bright out there. It's obnoxious. Um, I am just kind of pausing for a minute, letting that go. This is definitely something that I'm going to change. I don't like that bright green, but I think I need that to dry a bit. And there isn't really a green that I am appreciating very much for what I want on this palette. So again, if we look... Um, we've got some phthalo green and some cobalt greens. Cobalt green deep, cobalt turquoise, viridian, um, bamboo green. Bamboo green, spoiler alert, it's phthalo green, yellow shade. So that's they're not exactly what I want. I think I'm just going to mix my own. We're going to go... This one. 
which is their cerulean blue. Again, tune in on Saturday. I have a lot to say. I have a lot to say about these color names and choices. <clears throat> and go with the permanent yellow light. That's still too, that's still too, I think like St. Patrick's Day, not what I want. Uh, they definitely are different. So Dylan, um, let me share that. Paint with honey is such an ingenious idea. So they lay down any differently. They, uh, absolutely. They definitely feel very different from what I'm used to. That said, um, this is brand new, so I can't say like different in a bad way or different in a good way. They just definitely feel different. Uh, things are a little stickier. Well, some of them like this is uh, yellow ochre. It is already dry. Now, if they all dry like that and this is all I have to do to reactivate and get some paint going, that's going to be lovely. Right now, they're still a bit, um, Ooh, I like that better. I like that better. Okay. Just throwing a little yellow ochre into that mix. So that was the, um, bamboo green permanent yellow light and a little yellow ochre. And it's really kind of like a yellow olive type. And I'm going to just put a little bit of this in here. Yeah. Hopefully this will kind of move. There's a lot of paint on my brush right now. But I think I like that green a bit better. Much better. It just looks a little more natural to me than that other just looked so phthalo. I didn't, I didn't care for it. Hi, Christy. So, right. We are glad you're here now. The point on this brush, can I just say... Look at this. Look at how you can, I mean, I can lay down a large area at once or I can get such fine and I, it definitely takes a little getting used to the long round, but look at, you want a point? I mean, this will, this will pull the paint and it just keeps going and going going because the brush holds so so much and you can just paint for days look at that now we have some grasses let's get some more going over here yeah let's put a little a few over here i got a little bit i should have tapped my paint where's my rag there we go i need to kind of touch that yeah, I'm just going to get some whiskey. I was like mentally prepared to accept that spring was coming and winter was a dud this year. We hardly got any snow and, you know, I was accepting it. And I was like, okay, I'm ready. We can move on. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. And then old man in winter was like, oh, you sound like you're pouting. Here, have some snow. <laughs> 10, 10 to 12 inches last night. And I was like, oh, all right. Now it's winter again. Welcome, welcome back to winter. I knew it's Maine. Just because the calendar says spring, we don't get spring yet. But I think I was like, yeah, I'm ready for this. I mean, I was starting, I think I was talking to, um, I was talking to Shauna because I want to try to see if I can get, uh, 
some plain airtime scheduled and I went to, uh, I've gone, you guys, I've shared before that I've, I've gone plain air painting with Lindsay from the Frugal Crafter channel. And, um, we always have so much fun and I wanted to see if I could get something going that I could have, uh, where Shauna caution artists at play and Lindsay and I could like get together and not necessarily, if you don't have to do anything for YouTube per se. Sorry guys. <laughs> Just so we can have fun. <laughs> oh, we'll share, we'll share. But anyhow, so, <clears throat> Uh, yeah. And I was like, okay, we, maybe we can go to the coast. And I'm like, yeah, I was ready for, I was ready for this stuff to start to transition. And then winter came back and I don't mind. I don't mind that winter's back for a little bit, but can I just say <laughs> the frustration in this palette right now, I will be attacking this with a magic eraser, like a son of a gun. Um, yeah. And if you guys don't know, take your palette, uh, do, I do it to my metal palettes too, um, scrub them with a magic eraser. Basically what it's doing is really finely scratching up the surface and it's going to help your paint stick and not bead and do this. And clearly, you know, we've got some phthalo pigments going on here. So there's some staining. There's definitely some staining. That's that, um, that's that PBR 25 right there staining. I need to let this dry a little bit more before I come back in because everything kind of blurs. Oh, it would be, yeah, Sheila says that sounds like a fun get together. I think it would be wonderful. So yeah, I'm hoping I get to reach out to Lindsay and uh, see. Your snow's already mostly melted. Yeah, no, up here it is, it's deep and it was heavy, it was wet. Lou was out there plowing and I just, I'm trying to put in some other values on top of this. I'm really liking this side, I'm like really liking this side right here. <clears throat> but you know, maybe doing something like this then will encourage you. I have like, this is bleeding up into my sky. I'm probably going to come back with a line right there once that dries where I can kind of lock down that horizon. Um, but you know, maybe this will inspire something else that you want to paint. And like I said, even if this doesn't come out perfect, that's okay. This is just to get that creativity flowing. And I had no idea when I started what I was going to be painting. I just knew I needed to paint. Do we need some flowers over here? Maybe we need some flowers. I'm trying to think what's going to be growing from here. Oh yeah, that is excellent. We definitely, we definitely have to, we definitely have to reach out to her. Um, I will text her. Now I'm like, we're getting like more values coming in and this is still quite wet. So it is like blending out, like the edges are softening. I don't have any defined edges. I need to stop, just put a few more darker values in, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop. I'm going to grab my heat tool. Um, and I think I'm going to dry this for a moment. I wanted to put some, maybe get some darker values in that water first while it's still, while this is still damp and moving. Let's see. I'm going to take some of that ultramarine blue. Put this here. And... Uh, my winter storm warning has been extended until March 21st at 2 p.m. March 21st at 2 p.m. was two hours ago. <laughs> I'm glad that, uh, 
when my A device here is on top of it. I can't say her name or she's going to interrupt us. All right. I just added a little bit of black to that ultramarine. Kind of like lunar blue, but this is not the right black pigment because it's not a granulator. Although the ultramarine is. And I'm just going to... Let's get some... That wasn't very straight. That's okay. No judging. My horizon's a little wonky. Maybe my world is tipped on its side. <laughs> You know what? It is fine. Well, that really darkens things up, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't mind that. What I just did there, as you saw me pause, I looked up, looked at my monitor to see what I thought of the painting. Sometimes when I am looking at my painting, and I am, you know, face down, I'm staring at it, we are in it. Sometimes we don't see it all. Um, if you grab your phone, turn on your camera, look at what you're painting through the screen on your phone. You're going to see it so differently. And oftentimes I will like check and I will look at it on my monitor because usually I have, you know, because of YouTube, um, I know that puts me in a unique situation that most people aren't necessarily in, but nine times out of 10, actually 95% of the time that I am painting, there's a camera on and I can see what I'm doing on the monitor. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I will kind of look up and be like, oh yeah, okay, that's it. Or I'll look up and be like, oh no, I need to, I need to add something here. Something's missing. It kind of helps me just see it in a different, a different point of view, a different perspective. And, um, I don't know. I find that it helps this this brush is great. It is wonderful for doing um, water like waves because you can start off nice and thin. Uh, you can press and get thicker and then lift right back out and you have a nice wave that just kind of or a ripple in your water that just kind of happens. And try to remember to do those like different sizes and we kind of stagger them. And at first it's going to look weird and you're going to be like, this isn't right. Trust the process. And my grass is coming up, of course, into my water space. That's fine. I wasn't planning on doing the dark marks, but again, intuitive painting. You are going to go with what feels like you should be doing. Oh, I bet this would be an amazing brush for painting leaves. Could you imagine um, starting with your starting with your stem and then a big press to get your the you know body of your leaf in there? Oh yeah, I bet this would be great. I am loving the long rounds so far. In fact, I think I ordered I think I ordered the size eight round. Um, I ordered some other ones too. I can't wait to share them with you guys. Uh, I will have another as soon as if the supplies would ever arrive. So I had decided what my next curated collection was going to be. And for those of you who are watching are like, what are you talking about? Um, <clears throat> I used to review or share and pay for and receive a bunch of art subscription boxes. And I got tired of the art subscription boxes and um, basically the curated collections were my solution to the things I didn't like about art, art subscription boxes. So. I create and right now they're not every month. I don't know if they will become uh, more often, 
Uh, I think that one spot is a little darker than I would like, so we're just going to dab up a tiny bit of that paint with a tissue. Perfect. <clears throat> so anyhow, uh, I don't know if they will become every month. It really depends on um, what you guys think, how you guys respond. Uh, your feedback is definitely going to determine if I do them more often or not. So uh, what I do is I create a collection of art supplies and I share those with you. So unlike an art, subscri art subscription box, you get to see everything before you make a decision to buy it. How many times, if you get art subscription boxes, did you get one in and go, oh, if only I knew what was coming this month, I would have skipped that. For me, that happened too often. And of course, they're not going to tell you what's in the boxes because they want you to get the boxes. Um, and then once you've got it, you've got it. So use it or don't, they don't care. Uh, I have a lot of supplies that if I, you know, didn't use them, I gave them, like I gave them away. I, I gifted them. They didn't just go to waste, but I certainly got tired of spending money on things that I was just not, I was just not using. So you get to see everything before you decide if it's something you want to get. And then not only that, the other thing I didn't like about them was repeat products. Like I have got quite a few of a few things because I just got them in more than one box and I didn't like that either. So that's the other thing about these curated collections is if you already have something that's in the collection, you don't have to buy it. You just skip that part. You only get what you need. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to be unlike the art subscription boxes, and I know YouTubers like review the boxes, they unbox it, they show it to you. Um, they might do something real quick with it. If you get to see that whole process, you know, who knows, but with these, if you decide to invest in one of the collections that I put out. I then work with those products and I work with those products for a while. Uh, we just did a curated collection with Meaden. And so if you've been around for the last month and a half, you know, I used the heck out of those products. I shared many videos using those products, how you could use them, um, different ways you could, you know, use them, things you could do with them. I wanted to make sure that if you chose to invest in that and hang out with me, that you were definitely learning how to use them and you were going to be able to enjoy what you got. So my next curated collection is coming. Um, I've, I've chosen the supplies. I've just been waiting for them to get here. And unfortunately it's taken a little longer than I expected, but I am hoping that you are going to be able to, um, that I'll be able to present you with the next collection in April. That is my hope. I had a couple items that I really needed or wanted to include in it that were back ordered. So look at that brush. I really like this brush. I am like loving this brush. <clears throat> and Clark, uh, hi, Cat's Heart Picks. She says, Clark Fine Art, do you have snow now? Oh yes, we have snow. I was just telling everybody, we got about 10 to 12 inches of snow. I was sharing over on Discord with patrons this morning. I, I think I blew up all of their phones. Like when it was at eight o'clock this morning, I was like, we got snow. Uh, and then all the birds that were like, oh, look. <clears throat> all the other feeders are snowed in, but they have, but, but they have food here. 
So yeah. Um, I think I want this. See, and I told you guys, I rarely use white when I paint watercolor, but I'm going to do it right now because I want to try the, um, yellow ochre is more opaque. And of course this Chinese white is going to be more opaque. I want to kind of lighten this up and make it look like, um, we've got some more sand right here. So we're going to see if we can't create ourselves. And the other thing too, is I just poured these yesterday. So when my pans have dried, I'm like, I don't care if my paintbrush is dirty. I'm going into that color and I'll grab it. And I know I can clean them. And the paint's not going to be too contaminated. It just might look a little less than pretty on the surface. But right now, <clears throat> I just painted these, I uh, painted these. I just poured these yesterday. So I'm like, I don't want to. Let me grab a little bit of this. Yeah, that's better. Just grabbed a little of that kaput mortem. Happened to be closest. And I knew it was going to give me more of what I was looking for for sand. So anyhow, I, I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to contaminate my colors. I don't know if that's going to, if it's going to contaminate them. If I touch them, they're still soft and, and sticky and yeah. I have no idea. Now I'm trying to do a little, little negative painting here between some of this grass that I liked. Bring that beach forward. I have no idea how that's going to dry. There we go. Yeah, I like that better. Let's bring a little bit up into here. Although I don't mind some of these darker. Actually, I think I kind of like that. I'm gonna leave it. Yeah. All right, I am going to give this, so there you go. I actually used white painting and watercolor. <clears throat> I'm gonna give this a dry. I'm gonna check on um, chat while I do that. Let me switch up my mic so that you don't hear this get noisy. That must be what Lou was talking about, Cat's Art Picks, because you just, you just, I was reading your comment that you said I was reading the news this morning and they said a blizzard was headed um, for Maine. Lou was just telling me today, he's like, oh, there's a chance we could get another 20, up to 20 inches on Saturday. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, sure. Okay. You don't have to plow it, but <laughs> I don't, but um, yeah. I've just been so disappointed in winter. Winter's like one of my favorite seasons. So I know I am like the oddity, but I love when it's snowing. I'm like, it was all yellow ochre and umber out there. Like that's what was everywhere. It wasn't even like, there was just a hint of some green fuzz starting to peek up, but it was just like yellow ochre, umber, and gray. That was it. It was like, bleh. I can understand why people don't like winter if that's all they see during winter. But we get like this beautiful blanket of white and like big fluffy thing like all over the trees and it's just and it sparkles and it's like it's gorgeous. I love winter. <laughs> I like snow. Um, but yeah, what we've had is that nasty ochery umber grayness. And I'm like, oh, I don't I don't like this so much. So yeah, this episode yeah, this episode of Carp Fine Art brought to you by Magic. No noise. Mm 
Now that is not completely dry. It's still, my paper's still a little um, cool. So I know, like when you feel it with the back of your hand, if it feels cool, it's not completely dry yet. If I was painting this and it was planned, like if I loved this painting and I thought, oh, I want to do this again, I would definitely like know where my beach was going to be in relation to everything else because this is looking a little green. Um, but again, it's that ochre on top of that blue. So there you go, green. Um, but I'm still really liking it. Look at the difference in the values. Like that grass looks thick. I don't want to walk through that. That looks like it'd be like that really sharp, thick blades of grass that like, you know what I'm, they're like really rough. They cut you up. That's what I, that's what I feel when I look at that. I don't want to walk through there. I really don't. But you know what I do want to do? <clears throat> I want to, I want to play with some of these. Maybe let's get some purple. Yeah, I don't even know where. Like, see, I told you, if I have the space, I am going to take the space. It is like, it is like when you climb into your bed, but your partner's not there and you get the whole thing and you're like <laughs> spread out. <laughs> that is me with my colors on my palette. <laughs> it's like spreads out everywhere. Um, okay, let's see. I'm going to grab... Let's get in the M gram. Let's grab a little bit of this mineral violet because that looks pretty. Oh, my ears are like popping. So I know the pressure is just changing. So it, they said it could snow again. It is four o'clock. She lies often. She being my A device. I can't say her name. I'm just going to put in some, maybe we got some flowers in here. I don't know. I don't know what kind of flowers are growing at the beach. Um, Unfortunately, I mean, I've been to the, I, this is the furthest I've ever lived from the ocean where we are <clears throat> in Maine right now is the furthest I have ever in my life lived from the ocean. I would have to drive, um, probably an hour and a half or so to get to the, to get to the coast. That's a ways away. <laughs> Jay says that happens when I'm in the bed. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, I just think uh, I want some flowers over here. Maybe, uh, maybe a couple over here. And because I didn't mask or leave any white spaces. Maybe I will grab, um, oh, absolutely, Rob. Um, maybe I will grab some of the Dr. Paige Martin's bleed proof white because this white is just, I, I can tell you right now, it is not opaque. It is not going to cut it. Um, I will come at this full, full strength right out of this pan and show you. This is going to look beautiful right now. Right? Look at those pretty white flowers. But don't take your eyes off of them because I have a feeling they're going to disappear like in no time at all. Now, one thing you do have to be careful about if you have this brush is um, it's got a very long point. So when you want to put some like dots in like this, if you press too hard, you're getting a line. <laughs> like it just like, boom, presses right down and it's like a line, not a dot. So yeah, you, you gotta be, you gotta be careful with that. Let's see if we can. 
try to flick some spots in here. I'm not worried about this because I really do have a feeling that um, paint's going everywhere but my painting. If it lands anywhere else, like it's landed up here, it's going to disappear. Uh, I, I can quickly get that off my my sky and my water. Yeah, I don't think it's going to show up too much there, but anywhere that I maybe I don't want it, I'll just tap it out. But there we go. We got some more little flowers. Um, I don't think I'm going to put any out in the this little patch that's in the foreground. Uh, we'll wait and see what those do. I have a feeling that they are going to uh, disappear. Um, let's get yellow. I want some yellow flowers. I love this dry, sorry. Oh, so, okay, I just see what I was like, okay, we're talking about paper, what's going on? Um, Cats Art Picks, absolutely, um, definitely recommend the, either the Baohong Academy, which looks like this, or the Meaden, 100% cotton. And again, I showed that, oops forgot I had yellow paint on my brush. Let me just put this in my in my paint puck to hold it for a second. And the Academy, oh no, that was the Academy. The Median 100% Cotton looks like this. Um, they're almost identical to paint on. And I definitely recommend them definitely recommend them. The price is great and you can order them direct from Meaden. I actually have a link to Meaden in the description below and I have a discount code. It's also that down there, but it's Clark 10. So capital C L A R K one zero. Um, they have a very low threshold for free shipping better than Blick. And, um, I definitely recommend them. I definitely recommend this paper. This is the uh, seven by 10.2 block. There's 20 sheets on a block. And I too, I saw Rob say that he was, um, pleasantly surprised with the meat and 100% cotton paper. I was as well. Uh, fact, um, you guys know before this, uh, I was painting a lot on the B 100% cotton paper and I had the 90 pound and the 140 pound. I still like that paper. And that was the B cotton. And um, I did like that paper, but then I tried this one and it was a whole different experience. I really like this paper. And I know there's quite a few other, um, I know I don't know if you guys watch Diane Anton, but, um, I, I love her. I watch her. I watch her a lot on YouTube. She is definitely, um, one of the YouTubers that I, I kind of follow and, and I just like her style and she cracks me up a lot. So anyways, she uses it a lot and she likes it. And I was like, you know, I think I really want to give that a try. And so I did. And, uh, yeah. So thanks Diane for introducing me to the meat and paper. Um, I love it. I want to put some yellow dots like daisies in some of these white flowers, but I don't know. This is like the most flowery you guys, you guys don't get flowers from me often. So <laughs> if you're, if you're like, and even this is not, uh, not too in depth, but you know, I just thought maybe this will bring a little, little, little sunshine into my cloudy sky. It's what I've been feeling. I think I'm wanting I'm wanting the happiness of the flowers, but this is how my mind has felt the past couple of days. And it's going to come out. You're going to discover a lot when you do some intuitive painting, like things are going to come out. Things will be said in your painting. Um, <clears throat> it's not a bad thing. It's fine. Oh, my glasses are falling off my head. 
So yeah, there is the description. Now the other paper is one of the other papers that I can definitely say, um, I am using cold press, um, uh, cat's art picks. And I did show, if you watch the replay, the beginning of this, I did show when you open them, you can expect to see a colored page. That is the first page that's supposed to be there. You just take it off, use it as a scrap piece of paper. But this is the cold press, the 100% cotton cold press. And you may see that they've, I think their um, covers, their covers have changed a little bit. This is older stock, but the new ones are going to look like this. So this is rough, which I'm really excited to try the rough. I haven't painted on rough paper before. I'm really looking forward to it. So there is this one. Um, this is what the hot press looks like and the, it'll say cold press right here and it'll be a different color. But these are like the newer and you'll see the sides are glued in white versus this one is glued in green and you can get either one right now, but they're both, they're exactly the same paper. They just changed, they just changed their covers and the color of the glue that's on the side. <clears throat> okay. The other paper that I definitely recommend, and it is also listed in the description below. And I put it there because I thought, you know, if I finish this and I wanted to do something else, um, while this was drying, cause I wouldn't take it off the block cause I want it to dry nice and flat. Um, I would just grab my B inspired paper. And that is this one. This is the paper that, um, we are using for the 100 landscapes that I'm doing with patrons and members. Um, that for these little, these little paintings that we're doing, right? Like that. So we're, we've just been using the B paper and for cellulose paper, I like this paper. Um, this is definitely not, uh, Canson XL. I absolutely do not like that paper. I think I've said that more than that. I have not found a a way to use Canson XO. And unfortunately I have a ton of it, um, that I enjoy it. And, um, I got it before I knew any better. And I keep trying to find something that I'll enjoy painting on it, but I just haven't. So, <clears throat> um, hi Sydney. Yes. You received a gifted membership from Rob and, um, so you now have a super fan membership for the next month. And if you are connected to discord, um, you will have access to our discord server and all the fun and shenanigans that go on over there behind the scenes stuff, all of that. So I definitely recommend if you are a channel member or, um, whether you have chosen to get a channel membership or you've been gifted a membership that you join discord. If you're not familiar with discord, it is an app and you can download it on your phone. It's very easy to use. I do have a community post saying how you can connect the discord and YouTube and then YouTube will automatically, I have it set up. So it'll automatically allow you access to the server. All right. I've got some Dr. Martin's, um, Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white because I can already see, see how much they're disappearing. So I'm just going to take my Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof light and come in here before I grab my dryer to dry some of these spots. And I'm going to add a little bit more. Well, Sydney, we're glad that you got one and uh, happy that you're joining us. We have a lot of fun on Discord. I share a lot of behind the scenes stuff over there. So if you are someone who likes behind the scenes, um, you can become a super fan for less than a cup of coffee. Definitely less than a cup of coffee. <clears throat> Yeah, Superfans is like buying me a cup of coffee for a month and uh, one cup 
I have to all month to drink it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and you can hang out with us and have fun. Okay. I think I need some more grass in there. I need to dry that though. So I'm coming in with the dryer again. It's like disappearing. My white center on that yellow one is just totally disappearing. I think I need some birds. I think there should be some, there should be, should be some birds flying out there. We're going to have to add that. Yeah. So weird. So these paints are so weird. It, it's just, I'm not used to painting with paints with honey in them. Um, This, like when I touch the black, like it's squishy. It's, yeah, it's just, it's just weird. It's squishy, but yet it's still giving me paint. Um, or a, or a dragon. All right. <laughs> I think that does ask too much of me, Rob. I'm like, no, I don't think I'm painting a dragon in the sky. Not in half an hour. <laughs> um, Cat's art picks. The uh, I had just mentioned um, Diane Anton. She does a lot. I think by Viva sends her stuff, and um, she just did a bunch with the Vi uh, with the Viviva color sheets. And um, of course, they're they're going to be a die base. So if you're just doing them in sketchbooks and stuff like that, great. I think I actually have some that came in an art subscription box of all things, and. Um, Just trying to decide where I wanted a bird. Sorry. So, okay. Rob says, what are Viviva color sheets? So what they are is it's a sheet of paper and it's like a really heavy uh, stock of uh, paper and they have these big swatches of color on them. Kind of like a dot card. Think dot card, but a big flat swatch of color. Um, their colors are dye based and basically you just wet your brush grab some pigment uh, or paint off the sheet and paint away. And um, yeah, again, I, they're, they're going to be more dye based, um, but they are beautiful and the colors are really rich and strong. And um, yeah, if you, if you search, if you look up Diane's channel and you look for Viviva color sheets, you'll be able to see what they are. She uses them um, she has used them quite a bit and uh, I just think she's funny to watch and listen sometimes like I'm like right on the same wavelength sometimes where as she is whether that be a good thing or a bad thing I don't know but I enjoy her <clears throat> They're my birds. I just, you know, think we need some life. We need some more life other than our little plants and grass that's growing here. I think I want some more. I want my grass to have. And I know I said grass and I know, I know I said grass and you see me grabbing brown and yellow. Um, but I want my grass to be more. I feel right now this just feels like um, little dots on top of what should be my grass. I want to come through and pull some more grass through this so that I have stuff coming over front of some of these flowers. And I'm just putting centers, little tiny dots in the middle of my white flowers. Maybe some of my yellow ones. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Oh, thank you. We are just doing some intuitive painting today, Cat's Art Picks. I was stuck, and this is what came out. Um, I'm going to take the green gold, which is actually yellow. It is a yellow pigment. I'm going to mix it up with some of these greens that I had over here. Uh, green little beads everywhere. I'm going to have to scrub the heck out of this palette. Otherwise, you guys probably won't see me use this much. Um, because one, if these, I wouldn't want to take these out. Like if I go, when I go plein air painting, I wouldn't want to take these out because they're made with honey. And this is a big palette for some plein air painting. I, I don't want anything this big. I want like one of my little palettes if I go out doing that. And, um, <clears throat> so in the studio, you'll probably see me pop this out and have a ceramic palette here to mix on because... I have been spoiled by my ceramic palettes and I love them. And if you don't have one, Meaden carries a plethora and I definitely recommend. Um, links are in the description, you know, no shameless plug there, but um, yeah, I do definitely recommend them. I'm just trying to find a green that I can be happy with. And I was almost there and this is now not it. But it's, it's so weird trying to get paint off of these right now. And again, I don't know if it's just because I need to let them dry more. Um, are they always going to feel this way? It's a little weird. Um, it's, it's, it's different. Okay. It's not weird. It, it's different. It's just different. For sure. It's just, it's just different. Let's uh, change it. I don't think that changed it up much, but. All right, green, green, green. Now let's just try some of what's on the brush. It's definitely warmer. Oh, that's all right. I like it. It works. Pull some of this. I'm not even worried about where my flowers are. If I go over them, fine. Um, this is very, a much warmer green. Oh my. Oh. I'm like, all of a sudden, I just heard this like engine rev outside. I was like, what is going on? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I think it was Lou got home from plowing. Apparently, yeah, he just moved. The driveway must have frozen. With the door yard, as they say here in Maine. Where are, where are all my Mainers? <laughs> you know. The Doyad is frozen. It is so, it is wicked cold out there. Wicked cold. <clears throat> it's about 20 degrees and the wind chill is frigid. I'm going to put some of this warmer color down here. I need some more, more grass. I just don't have a green that I really, that picked up a lot of pigment. See, the other thing I'm worried about is that I'll grab and I'll use too much, but then of course with this beading palette, nothing stays together. So it looks like I have nothing. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, bub. <laughs> Gosh, an artist like, says, yeah, the doyad bub. That's right. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You guys are probably like, what the heck are you guys talking about? Oh, that's what uh, us folks up here call it. It's the old doyad. It's where you park your car. Everybody knows that. There's some much darker green. Let's get some of that in there and see what happens. Because why not? Oh, yeah, look at 
that's got some darker color. And just kind of being selective with this so I can get some darks in through there. And I don't want to go too much. Some here and there. And see here I thought earlier, I was like, well, I'll do some intuitive painting. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll paint, wait for it, uh, George Pencil Art. Maybe I'll paint a tree. <laughs> and then I really had every intention. I was like, oh, maybe I'll do like another birch. Like I have my, my painting that's here where I did the birch trees with the light. That's something I want to work more on is bringing light into my paintings um, in a more folk, like more of a focal point kind of way. And um, <clears throat> so I thought, oh, maybe I'll do something like that with like another birch tree in it or something. And then we sat down and started doing this. And of course, you guys see. Oh, I don't want to get too much into that. Um, that didn't happen at all. I ended up at the beach. <laughs> so um, there we go. But yeah, I really had like in my mind before the stream started, as I was thinking like, all right, intuitive painting, but still trying to have like ideas of what I wanted to come out of this painting. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll just do, you know, some trees and get some light back there. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I could Bob Ross it and all of a sudden just slap in and go, let me grab my, let me grab my gouache and we'll just slap a tree right here, right in the front, bring it across the, bring it across the painting, really change your, your viewpoint there. No, I'm not going to do that, but I could. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, Rob says the tree lady strikes again. I was wondering why you didn't add a tree to this one, but I stayed silent. <laughs> George. Oh. <clears throat> hey, I love trees. We are the pine tree state. We have a we have a lot of forest here in Maine. But birch trees are one of my favorites. I love birch trees. I'm kind of really liking the way. Uh, that that warmer green that I put in there and then this darker green. I'm liking what they're bringing to this. I really wasn't happy with that green I started with. And so I guess that's just goes to show you. Just keep going. Right? Don't let it stop you. Look at those. Look at that grass. I like that grass much better. <clears throat> Hi, Starving. Welcome. <laughs> starving is what I have to share. Oh, for all of you watching on the replay who didn't get to experience Starving's entrance, there you go. <clears throat> Always a pleasure. Were you at the beach today? Maybe I was channeling that. All right, I'm going to get some more. Oh, there was a bead of paint, right? And that would have been too much. Oh, guys, I definitely have to tell you, I, I do like this. I do like this brush. I will like it even more when the replacement comes. And there's... Too much paint there um, when the replacement comes and uh, the ferrule stops sticking me. Hey, I'm kind of liking that. Oh, she says sunrise was gorgeous. Yeah, see, I just kind of, we're a little cloudy here. But it did snow, so... You guys have just been watching me paint grass. 
Welcome to the channel where we make grass grow. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I think I like it. I'm I am not disappointed with this one. I am not. What do you guys think? I'm trying to decide if there's something else that it needs, something else I want in there. You could, you could, like if I wanted to, I could, I could like scrub right here and lift out a little bit, maybe put some more light into it, but I'm, I'm just not going to mess with it. It already kind of, it's like, it is what it is right there. Um, ah, Starving says, so have, have the pure pigment set is fantastic perfect starter set to add to yeah yeah these um so the first two rows and to here that is the pure pigment set by mission gold um the greens there's your green um, I did some mixing of my own greens today because that is not exactly what I wanted, but you can see you definitely can mix your greens. Uh, absolutely. In fact, if you want to know how to mix greens, I didn't even realize until it went out after it went out Monday. So I've been releasing the, um, the mixing videos, the Monday mixes, and I didn't even realize that like the last three Mondays in a row, I mixed greens. So apparently my brain was ready for green to happen, um, probably because of all the, you know, ochre, gray, umbery stuff we've been looking at outside with no life and no snow. <laughs> so until last night when we got a foot, but, and I guess I've just been wanting greens. So we mixed up you know, a plethora of different greens. Um, and last week we did spring greens that we mixed with the PY 150 and the PB 36 colon one. So PB 36, we have that right here. Oh, we have a version of that, right? And this is not what the way the one we used looked like it. It's a very blue cerulean blue, um, looking pigment, not this green. Um, and the yellow, we mixed a bunch of spring greens. You can absolutely uh, mix up plenty of greens that would be great if you like to paint landscape like I do. And um, yeah, I, I like this palette. I need to wait, I think, and let these paints dry some more and then come back and see um, after they've dried a bit, how, you know, how are they as far as being able to paint and rewet? Now, when I talked to M. Graham, because again, these three are M. Graham colors. There are those colors there. So M. Graham right here, Sennelier right here. That Sennelier could put Mortem. Oh, I uh, love it. Love that color. It's a PR 101. PR 101 is such an amazing pigment. Um, it is an earth pigment and, and if you're like, you don't like the neutrals or I don't know, but I love painting landscape and PR 101 is an amazing color. It is a color, although this is not PR 101, but it, this is burnt sienna, but it is a color that can go from looking like this to looking like this and having this like purpley undertones and it's all in how they process it. And I find PR 101 fascinating, but you know, I have been known to be called a pigment nerd time or two, but that's okay. I will convert you all. I swear I will. Um, <clears throat> have a look at those one more time. Uh, if this is a palette, again, these four are not in your pure pigment set by um, Mission Gold. Unlike the Rosa pure you know, mono pigment set, which was not a mono pigment set. We, I won't go into that, but, um, this is one that I think I definitely would recommend for the color selection. And if you are a person who enjoys paints that have honey in them, um, or if you're a person who would like to try a set of paints that have honey in them, 
think this is a great collection of colors and everything has a light fast um, of four or five stars with the exception of one. And again, check out the video that's coming out on Saturday where we're going to dive into all these pigments and I'm going to talk about them and um, I'm going to really get more in depth on these and what that means as far as they are four star, five star, three star, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, tune into that. That'll be Saturday. But look at the colors just as a, you know, look at all the different, um, again, not, didn't swatch them today. That will come in the next video. Um, I didn't want to wait. I should have put the swatching video out Saturday and we should have painted the piece next week, but I couldn't wait. I was impatient. I was feeling stuck and I needed paints that I was excited about and some intuitive painting time to just kind of loosen things up. And I love that I added the birds and I just don't know why they're flying off my page. I wish I made them to me. They feel like they're flying off my page. I hope you feel like they're flying in. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I look down and I'm like, Hey, they're flying away. Come back and come back. But anyhow, um, take care, Sheila. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with us. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, intuitive painting. Look, can I already show you? Remember how buckled this looked at the beginning? There's a little bit right here still. And I always find that right where the spot where you would take it off the block, that never pulls as tight. Um, of course, you know, they can't glue it all. You have to have a way to remove it. Um, but look at the rest of this. Like if I flip this this way, look at how flat that has dried. I love this paper. Every time I paint on it, if I leave it on the block till it's dry, and this is, this is pretty much dry now. Um, there's still a little bit of moisture in it. I can still feel coolness when I touch it. <clears throat> but if you, <clears throat> if you let it dry on the block naturally on its own, um, every time it lays flat for me, I, I can't say enough about this medium, pa medium paper. I definitely recommend that you give it a try. Look at these colors. Look at the sky. That was because I don't have a paint gray. Thanks for hanging out with us, Erica. Uh, I hope to see you again next time and see you over on the Discord. So <clears throat> this here, um, I have a definite answer for that, Cat's Art Picks. So, and, and reasons. So we don't have paint gray in this set because it's a mono pigment set. So this is the burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to make our paint gray. But look how they separated in that sky. I love it. It's just so moody. That's, that's how my brain, the sky is how my brain has been for the last two days. For sure. The foreground with the flowers and like the happy and it's spring. That is how I have wanted my brain to feel the last few days. And I just can't get it to pull it back. So it's funny that that's when I look at this, um, when I, when I look at this painting, like I am feeling what I, I am seeing what I want to feel and what I am feeling. And, um, yeah. Do some intuitive painting, my friends. Give it a try. Drop me a comment and let me know. Do you do it? Um, are you gonna give it? A, are you gonna give it a go? I'm really curious to see uh, kind of your your thoughts and feelings on it. Um, I could have taken my my bleed proof white and put in some you know white with the waves, but I kind of like it just the way it is. <clears throat> but I'm really interested to hear. Uh, your thoughts on intuitive painting. And if you, if you try it to get out of like one of those ruts when you're stuck and you have that artist, you know, artist block for lack of a better word. And what do you do? Let's see. Let me come on here. Let's look at this a little bit bigger. That's the one I wanted earlier. There we go. I forgot my, I forgot to bring my iPad up with my new little fancy touch switching. So, I've been trying to do it the old way. <laughs> now I'm like, where's my stuff? Um, so Cat's Art Pick, uh, Cat's Art Picks asked a question: Daniel Smith or Windsor Newton? Decisions, decisions. I just don't know. Okay. <clears throat> so my question would be: 
um, the best way for me to answer that is when you paint with watercolor, do you like a paint that you can put down and it kind of, it's, it's reliable. If I put it here, it's going to stay here. Um, like you saw, if you watched as I painted with these colors, I love how they move. I can say that first impression. I love how the mission gold moves in the wet wash. Like, look at, look at this. Um, as I was setting the stuff down here, I found that it was moving a lot longer than some of the other paints that I used. And I, I enjoyed that about it. But if you prefer to know that if I have even a wet wash, um, if I'm going to put down this color, I want it in this space. I want those soft edges, um, but I don't want it to take off and go, you know, halfway across my paper. That is Winsor & Newton to me. That's how Winsor & Newton feels to me. It is more controlled. Um, it has less movement. The colors are beautiful. Um, the pigmentation in the colors are beautiful. Now, if you prefer um, paints that can have more granulation to them, and not all of them do, but Daniel Smith is definitely a brand that granulating paints are going to granulate. Um, pigments that are prone to granulation are definitely going to granulate. And they will move a little bit more. Not like core. They're not going to take off like, like core paints will. Um, but Daniel Smith, when I put them down, <clears throat> I can get some movement in a wet wash, which is what I like. I love to let watercolor be watercolor and kind of take off. And, and part of watching it develop is part of the joy that I get in painting with it. So if you like watercolors that will have a little bit more movement in your washes, um, then Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith would be the one I would choose. So didn't really answer you, did I? Um, I you know, I did and I didn't. I don't think that Windsor and Newton Professional is... Uh, better or worse than Daniel Smith. They are different paints and they will act and re react differently based on how, you know, what you do and how you use them. Um, I could paint the same picture in both, um, but they definitely will move differently. Um, both are very good paints to choose. I don't think you can go wrong with either, but it's just going to be a matter of your preference and how um, you like to paint. So I hope that answered your question. And I hope that helped other people who might be, you know, wondering like, what is the difference between Windsor and Newton and Daniel Smith? Um, I think Daniel Smith does have more granulation in pigments that are known to granulate. And I think they move a little bit more. Um, but both are beautifully pigmented. And both have beautiful colors to choose from. Um, so yeah, I'm going to throw that ball back in your court. <laughs> but I hope that helps. And Rob says, I will say both. And I'm here to tell you that I'd have both. Um, of course, you know, my collection and brands are growing. Um, I have some stuff planned to bring to you in the near future that I hope is going to really help answer um, that question that Cat's Art Picks just asked for um even more brands so stay tuned for that there's some there's some stuff that i am working on that's coming you actually did help um to answer my situation great excellent i am glad um but i would definitely say both too and rob said um i never knew court was golden paints watercolor brand yes um if you love golden when I paint acrylics, golden's my favorite. Um, absolutely. I mean, I like Liquitex as well. And, but those are the two brands that I use. I use Liquitex and I use, um, golden. I love golden heavy body. Um, I love golden fluid, um, like and everything in between. <laughs> so yeah, it's been forever since I have painted acrylic on this channel, but Core is Golden's um, watercolor line, and 
I love core. In fact, you're going to see core uh, coming very, very soon. Hopefully very, very soon. You're going to see um, me do some painting with core paint. Um, yeah. So if you are interested in those, stay tuned because so many, so many amazing brands are, are coming. Um, I've been blessed that I'm going to get to share some really interesting new stuff with you guys. So lots of, lots of things, lots of things that are coming. Um, oh, thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad that, uh, you liked it. I like these paints. So glad you did this demo. Um, yeah, I had fun. Uh, this again, I can't give you my final opinion on the mission gold because <clears throat> I really think that I need to let these dry down a little bit more because like I said, normally I don't paint with watercolors like fresh from the tube. I always dry my paints down first. I just enjoy them more that way. I feel like I have a lot more um, control in, in Shauna, caution artist at play, who's here in the chat today said that same thing. Um, I just feel I have more control with my paints when I do that. And so I know that these may never dry hard, but I am hoping that they will dry harder than they are right now because some of them I, I get into and they're still really wet from the tube. So they're like, they just feel sticky and goopy and I don't like that. And I know that that's the honey. Um, but then there are others like the ultramarine, and this yellow ochre that when I take a wet brush and I go over them, I mean, these, you watch the, the yellow ochre right here. When I touch it with water, watch the color get lighter, right? And that you can't see because like this, this palette, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be scrubbing it after the stream. It is going down this piece because I can take it out. It's going downstairs with me and I am taking a magic eraser and I'm scrubbing the heck out of that. So this is not a medium one. This is just a different, just ceramic, but I mean, I want to be able to put my paints in this one. I had an issue with this. It's the weirdest thing. It's the only ceramic palette I've ever used. That's beading right there. You see it pulling away from an area. All right, they're everywhere. I'm telling you, I have ceramic palettes everywhere. So on a medium palette, there, put that paint down. That paint stays. That is like the joy of a ceramic palette. This is what I like my palette. This, this, no, that is no, 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 no. Um, head. I, I wanted, you know, I wanted it to be pretty and unstained before the stream started because we were looking at a new palette. Um, but I'll update you guys. Um, I will be giving that a scrub to see if I can get it to stop beating and I'll just use a magic eraser, but you see that porcelain porcelain palettes are just where it is at. And I had a question. There was a question yesterday now, I mod for Lisa over at Lock Refine Art. And yesterday, the question was asked by um, Dolphin Soul. Why a ceramic palette for watercolor? And I know she hasn't been on today during the stream, but I suspect she'll be watching later. That's why. That is why ceramic. And there's just something about it. Um, the watercolor just, you get this nice puddle on there and it's beautiful, beautiful. Um, does it rub? My Mary Blue has honey in it. And usually honey is not the binder. Honey is, is a humectant that they add to paint. Um, so, and a lot of us say that, and I think that is part of the confusion where people say honey binder, because, um, when I actually just had the conversations that I'm having with Judy over at core, um, that was something that she let me know, like honey is not the binder. Gum Arabic is still the binder, but honey is a humectant that they add to it. it is a preservative, um, to help 
with the longevity of the paint and to draw moisture into the paint so it doesn't dry super hard. Um, so there, some of the confusion around that. But that is a pleasure to mix on. That is not a pleasure. It is not. If, if you've ever worked on or mixed on a palette that beads, that is the worst beading I've ever seen. Um, that is not a pleasure to work on. Loving the Princeton Velvet Touch 14. Long round, long round. These bristles are so much longer. That point is like, poke your eye out. Um, yeah, I can't wait to get the new one in because then this, uh, this fail, it is sharp. I, I told Lou, I was like, when I get my new one in, can you see if you can like do something with this? Cause at least at that point, cause well, they haven't asked me to send this one back to them. So as long as when the new one, they tell me the new one's coming, if I don't have to ship this one back for their quality control, um, I'm going to see if he can't put one of his tools that he would use. Like he has tools for flaring, but I don't know if he has a tool that he could use to kind of take that edge down because it's, it, it's sharp. It's driving me crazy. I hope you like this. I hope you like today's painting. Um, yeah, see, plastic, um, plastic and metal. I have had metal palettes that bead too. And my mead and metal palette, my Daniel Smith one, it used to be. Eventually, eventually they tend to stop, but it's because you wear them down. Like your actual pigments and cleaning them and scrubbing them actually wears it down. Um, but this... Wait, now Starving, we talked about this brush last week. I think I showed you guys this one. Or or was it the Aqua Elite that I showed you? I don't know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Starving says, oh my God, stop it. Now another brush I have to find. Um, but this, I, I, the reason I sought out the Velvet Touch, um, I do have to say, was with all of you in mind. Because I know you see some of your favorite creators creating with things. And you want to try what they're using. Oh, let me just say, this is the medium palette, the metal one. And I had to scrub the heck out of this. And it doesn't bead like it used to. I can actually use that one now and I don't get frustrated. Um, but some metal palettes will do it. Some plastic palettes will do it. Ceramic. That was the only one I've ever used that has had any kind of beading. And then it's only partial but usually ceramic and you can just grab a plate, go to your dollar store. They sell like little lunch plates that are like, I have, I have a bunch of them. My meat and palette is on here. Look like that. I use these all the time before I got spoiled for meat in with all the ceramic palettes. <clears throat> that That's what I was using. You guys would see me use those all the time. So, uh, yeah, let me just say, let me just say this. So we'll, we'll kind of, try to start to close with this information. The reason I chose the Velvet Touch <clears throat> as you guys know, one of my favorite brushes to use is the Silver Black Velvet. I love these brushes. Mm -hmm. And I was using these a lot, um, but I had comments and people that shared with me, you know, they're, they look beautiful, but just the price, um, and I was getting the comment about the price of them. I absolutely recommend a silver black velvet brush. Um, it is like, uh, although if you are concerned about natural hairs in your brush, I believe the silver black velvet is a combination and does have natural hair. I'm pretty sure. Um, these do not. These are synthetic. But that is a, like a squirrel. It's softer. The one that would be like that in the Princeton line would be the Neptunes. The Neptunes are a soft, uh, squirrel-like brush. This is more like a sable, but has a lot more um, snap to the brush. So you see that it goes right back, right? Like pops right back to the point, like there's spring. Um, the reason that I chose the Velvet Touch line to look at, because I did also, I have the long round in the Princeton Aqua Elite series. These are not as expensive as like a silver black velvet. Uh, this 
mimics a Kalinsky sable almost perfectly, but it's synthetic. So if you don't want, you know, real animal hair in your brushes, this is supposed to be, this is definitely watercolor. Princeton makes this just for watercolor. They market it as a watercolor brush. And this is supposed to be the closest thing as far as the way it acts uh, and performs to Kalinsky Sable that you can get. Also is going to have more spring. Squirrel is softer um, and floppy. Um, sable is more springy. So the Velvet Touch line, these they market to watercolor, uh, gouache, I believe acrylic also, and they come in a variety of sizes and shapes. They're also more affordable. So it was with you guys in mind, um, cause I have been trying to find a brush that I will really enjoy using. that is also a quality brush. And so that if I'm using it all the time, because I like to paint with it, and you guys see me using it and you want to get one, it's not going to break the bank. And Velvet Touch, at first I thought Aqua Elite, but Velvet Touch was actually even a little bit less. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to order one and try it. And so far I'm really liking it. So I just thought if I can use a brush like this, um, that if you guys go, you know what, I want that brush. Because sometimes the brush is the difference. Uh, especially in watercolor, if you're seeing your favorite artist paint something and you always see them using the same paintbrush, they've got that brush down. They That paintbrush is like an extension of their hand. Um, you will get to know your brushes very well. You're going to know what they can do. You're going to know exactly how that point's going to hit that paper. Uh, you're going to know how that paint's going to flow off, how it holds water. You are going to learn so much about your brush. And if you see your favorite artist using the same brush like over and over and the same paper, sometimes it is worth, it, if you are like trying to recreate something and you say, I just can't get it to work and you're using different paper or different brush, sometimes getting the same paper and the same brush are actually going to help you mimic the same results. Now, paper, paint, and brushes, right? Such a variety. Like, and there, I can get different paints to do different things. I can probably paint the same painting with all of my paints, but some I'm going to struggle to get there more than others. And that's going to be based on the quality of the paint. And, you know, I have shared with you guys last month, the set of medium brushes, and I still stand behind what I have said. If you are looking for a really budget, I mean, these are going to run you, these are going to set you back $20 for the entire set. They were part of the first curated collection. Um, and they came in the first curated collection where you could get the brushes, paper, a uh, set of medium watercolors, and a ceramic flower shape palette. This guy for $35. Um, plus the discount if you use my discount code. But you can order these brushes separately. They'll run you about $20 of that $35. So you see why it's definitely beneficial when you got the whole set because you were getting a full block of paper this size as well, not to mention the palette and the medium paints, which are student grade. And really they are, they're student grade. I think the pigmentation was lovely, um, but they are definitely student grade. And I would encourage you um, that, yeah, if you, that was your introduction to watercolor, it, it's a great introduction to watercolor they're very slow moving paint. But if that was your introduction to watercolor, um, I definitely encourage you um, to step up to another uh, more professional brand when you can afford to do so. And you're going to be blown away. Same paper, same brushes, different paint. You will see what I'm talking about, um, where how those things can make a difference. 
So yeah, this, sorry, starving, I'm setting you down a rabbit hole to look for another brush. Um, but it's, I love it. It's, it's amazing so far. Um, I am loving the things that I can get it to do. And, um, you're going to see some more with this brush for sure. And some other sizes. I saw a cat's art picks comment for me. It's the filbert in any size. Um, they make filberts in the velvet touch. They abs, they did, they do. This is one of the, um, ones where you can get this in a filbert. So yeah, if the, I, and I think, um, Jenna Rainey, I know she uses these in her watercolor. This is her brush of choice as well. Um, I also saw James mention, I have a bunch of Vel velvet touch brushes. They are awesome. Um, yeah, silver black velvets. Uh, they are, they, they have gotten a lot more expensive. Bye Rob. We will see you next time. Um, yeah. So silver black velvets have gotten, they, they're, they're pricey. And that was part of the reason why I kind of stepped back from them because a lot of you had made comments that, you know, they're just, they're just too pricey and, uh, out of respect for your pocket, because I know there are going to be things that you see here that you were going to want to get. And, um, I'm trying to be conscious of my choices in what I'm sharing with you. I want quality with affordability so that I can show you guys that you can, you can create beautiful art and you can have some quality supplies and hopefully not break the bank doing so. So there we go. My, that painting is completely dry. I hope you enjoyed the intuitive painting today and our first look at the um, Mission Gold, the Magello Mission Gold um, Pure Pigment Set. This again was the Plastic 33 Well palette from uh, Meaden. But they do make, Magello makes one just like this. I have it linked in the description if you're interested in that. It looks almost identical color. The top is a different color. Um, so there are a variety of them, but they are all linked below. If you want to check that out, plenty of room, plenty of room to mix, plenty of room to add colors. If you started with that set. Um, yeah, my first impression, I like it. I can't wait. I'm going to leave this open. That was one thing that I was like, Oh, should I, should I leave it open? I mean, I don't have animals. Well, I do. We, we have birds, but not up here in my studio. So I'm going to leave it open. That was something that Judy from M. Graham was telling me was to leave my palette just open in my studio and let it dry like this. So, and she encouraged me to, if you know, the palette in the studio, just to leave it open. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do for now. And we will, we will see how that goes. So I will also update you as I change the, add the extra colors, but I do think that the cobalt black will be ordered today. That is coming. I can't wait to see that because it's going to be a granulating black. And I have a feeling if I like it, I'm wondering how it compares to my absolute favorite, um, PBK 11, the Mars black or lunar black from Daniel Smith. So I am interested to find out hit that subscribe button and <laughs> turn on notifications, <laughs> find out, <laughs> get notified <laughs> when I share. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, everybody, the moderators, uh, Joseph and Tara, their links are in the description below. And if you would hit that like button, if you've hung out with me and had fun, um, I would greatly appreciate it. It is one free thing that you can do to support the channel. And thank you to all patrons and members for your support. If you got a gifted membership today, thank you so much, Rob. Um, please, everybody, I do encourage you, get on Discord. Join us over there. Check out the community post. I will repost it for all of you um, who have just joined. If you don't know how to connect Discord and YouTube, it's really simple. Um, and it walks you through that. So I will post that on my community tab here in just a couple of moments and, and make it so it goes back to the top so that it's easy for you to find. Yeah, I think that covers it. I don't know what we're going to be doing next week yet, but um, maybe we'll paint something Eastery. It'll be just before Easter. So, hmm, yeah, or springy. Maybe we'll be 
done with the snow by then. I don't know. But anyways, have a great uh, weekend. Have a great rest of your week. And thanks for joining me. I'm going to pop another video up. It'll be over here. Uh, for those of you watching on the replay that you might like to watch next. And uh, I will, hopefully we'll see you over there. Until next time, my friends, keep creating. And I'll see you in a video real soon. Bye, guys.